Let's continue our look at solutions, and we're going to look at solutions from the point of colligative properties. Now, colligative properties are basically how a solute, whether it be an electrolytic solute like an ion or a non-electric electrolytic solute like a molecular compound or a covalent compound, um, these will, when added to a solution, actually change the properties of freezing point and boiling point. So in this presentation, we will look at how to calculate that change in the freezing point or boiling point based on the addition of a solute to the solution. Have you ever watched on one of the cooking shows how they add salt to the water before they put it on to boil? And while that is to flavor the water, it also helps to reduce the energy necessary to bring the water to a boil. Or why do they salt streets back east when it's cold, wet, and rainy um, to reduce the ice and to create the melting point so that the ice will melt? So salt, being an ionic compound, has an effect on both the freezing and boiling point of those compounds, and that's what we're looking at when we're looking at colligative properties. So to see how that change is going to affect the freezing point, we call that freezing point depression. And that freezing point depression can be calculated using a very basic formula of delta Tf, change in temperature freezing, is equal to m times i times Kf, where m is the molality, and we remind ourselves that molality is moles of solute divided by the kilograms of solvent, not the kilograms of solution, but the kilograms of solvent. The I is the dissociation factor, and we'll go over that in just a little bit. And Kf is the constant for freezing point. And for water, that is always negative 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. For other substances, they will be given to you in the problem, or we will have a data table or a chart that you can look those up. So once again, we're dealing with the freezing point depression as delta Tf, the change in freezing temperature, equal to the molal times I times K, M-I-K. For boiling point elevation, the change in the boiling point, we are going to use the same formula. However, we're going to call it delta Tb, the change in temperature for boiling. We're still going to use molality, a disassociation factor, and here the constant is going to be Kb because it's the constant for boiling. And for water, that value is 0.52 degrees Celsius per molal. And again, if there's another substance involved as far as being the solvent, we would give you a data table to find that information or it would be given to you in the problem. So let's talk about this factor called a dissociation factor. Now, there are going to be two types of solutes we're going to be involved with. We're either going to be involved with a molecular solute, which is a covalent molecule, and that covalent molecule would be a non-electrolyte because we will not have ions dissociating through this process. And the dissociation factor for a non-electrolyte, a molecular solute, is always going to be equal to 1. So our I value in the formula, in both formulas, the, both the freezing and the boiling point formula, we're going to have a dissociation factor of 1 if the solute is a non-electrolyte, a molecular compound. Now, how do you recognize that? Well, some of the suffixes that are used most commonly with molecular solute solutes or molecular compounds would be os, ain, ein, ein, anal, il, ahal, or al. And then whenever you see these suffixes, you're pretty certain that you're dealing with a molecular uh, compound, a molecular solute, solute, and therefore you're going to always give it a dissociation factor of 1. Now for ionic solutes, we have the process of dissociation taking place. When an ionic compound is introduced to a solvent, the ions will dissociate. They will break apart and they will fill the solution in a homogeneous manner. And the ions will dissociate, spreading throughout the solution. 
So therefore, we determine the dissociation factor by counting the number of ions present in the solution. So if we had salt, NaCl, being added to the solvent, we would have a dissociation factor of 2 because we have a sodium ion and a chlorine ion. If we had calcium chloride, CaCl2, we now have a dissociation factor of 3, and then you're dealing with 1 calcium plus 2 ion with 2 negative 1 chloride ions. And then for calcium phosphate, Ca3, PO42, we have a dissociation factor of 5, 3 calciums and 2 phosphates. The ionic suffixes are usually ide, ic, ite, and eight. So whenever you see the, those suffixes, you're pretty certain that you're dealing with an ionic solute and you need to count the number of ions to determine that dissociation factor. Now here we have a data table to help us find that information I was telling you about before. Based on what our solvent is, we have a column here of different solvents we might deal with. Um, the freezing point values, the normal freezing point values, uh, the normal boiling point values, and the K values for each of those solvents. Um, also reminding you, we have the basic formulas across the top, including the formula for molality, dealing with moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. And just to remind you, to find the molar mass, we're going to take grams divided by moles. So let's go ahead and solve some problems and let's start with a basic boiling point question and here it is we have what is the boiling point of one kilogram of water if 25 grams of sodium chloride NaCl have been dissolved in the solution. So let's start with our knowns and unknowns so we know we're going to use the boiling point formula of de delta TB equals MIKB. Our delta TB, that is what we're looking for. What is the boiling point? Um, M is our molality, moles over kilograms, and we're going to have to calculate that. The I value here would be 2 because NaCl has 2 ions, and the KB, since we're dealing with water, is 0 0.52 degrees Celsius per molal. We now begin by changing the grams of sodium chloride to moles because we're going to need those moles for the molality calculation. And 25 grams of sodium chloride divided by its gram formula mass or molar mass of 58 grams will give us a mole value of 0.43. We now take that 0.43 moles and we divide it by the kilograms of solvent. In this case, we're using one kilogram of water. And this gives us a molality, very simply, of 0 0.43 molality. Now we can use the delta TB equation, and we plug in 0.43 molal in for M, 2 in for the I, and 0.52 for the degrees Celsius per molal. And that, again, is our boiling constant for water. And this gives us a change in boiling temperature of 0 0.447 degrees Celsius. Now water typically boils or normally boils at 100 degrees Celsius and therefore our new temperature for boiling is going to be 100.447 degrees Celsius. So here we have a second example and this time we're going to deal with the freezing point and we are looking for the new freezing point if we have 1200 grams of water with 18 grams of glucose, C6H12O6, being dissolved in the solution. So once again, we start with our knowns and our unknowns. And here we're going to use the delta TF formula, which is delta TF equals MIKF. The delta TF is, again, what we're looking for. Our molality we will have to calculate based on the 18 grams of glucose. Glucose ends in the suffix O-S-E. It is a sugar. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are all non-metals, so this is a molecular compound. So our dissociation factor, our I, is 1. And since we're using water as our solvent, our Kf is negative 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. Again, we start by changing the grams of glucose to moles, and we do that by taking 18 grams and dividing by the gram formula mass of 180 and this gives us 0.1 moles of glucose. 
we take those 0.1 moles of glucose and we're going to change the 1200 grams of water to 1.2 kilograms reminding ourselves that the molality formula is moles over kilograms so 0.1 divided by 1.2 gives us a molality of 0 0.083 molal. We can plug those values into the delta TF equation 0.083 molal times the disassociation factor of 1 times the constant of negative 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal and that gives us a change of negative 0.154 degrees Celsius. Water typically or normally freezes at 0 degrees Celsius so our new freezing temperature is going to be negative 0 0.154 degrees Celsius. So here we're going to try a different type of equation or problem and here we have 5.0 grams of a non-electrolyte being added to 25 grams of water. The new freezing point is negative 2.5 degrees Celsius and we're looking for the molecular mass of the unknown compound. So we'll start by listing our knowns and unknowns and we're going to use the delta TF formula of MIKF and our delta TF is negative 2.5 degrees Celsius. Our molality will be what we're looking for because that's how we're going to determine our molecular mass. Our I because this is a non-electrolyte is 1 and our KF because it is water is negative 1.86. So we start by plugging in those values into the delta TF equation and when we plug in negative 2.5 degrees Celsius we're going to divide by 1 and divide by negative 1.86 and this is going to give us a molality of 1.34 moles per kilogram. Now we can take that 1.34 moles per kilogram and we know that that's moles over kilograms of solvent. So since we have 25 grams of water, that's 0 0.025 kilograms, so this gives us a value of x moles, which is in this case calculated out to be 0 0.0335 moles. Now taking that mole value, we know that the moles equal the grams divided by the molar mass. So if we take the 0 0.0335 moles, set it equal to the 5 grams that are added to the the solution and we divide that by the molar mass which is our x value what we're looking for and then rearrange that algebraically x equals 5 grams divided by 0 0.0335 moles we end up with a value of 149.25 grams per mole as the molecular mass of this solute.